Abundance and distribution of organisms. Okay, so let's start off with the definitions. What do we mean by abundance and what do we mean by distribution? Well, abundance is basically the population size, the number of individuals of a single species in a habitat or ecosystem. So it's the same as population size. And then distribution. You're unlikely to get asked for the definition of this, but it's where the species are found in an ecosystem or habitat. Okay, so this abundance and distribution of organisms is going to be controlled by different biotic and abiotic factors because they're all interacting within the ecosystem. So let's look at abundance first. Some of the biotic factors, well, we're going to have intraspecific competition. So within a species, we've got interspecific competition between species. And then separately, we're going to look at predator-prey relationships. So I try to make this nice and intra-within. So intraspecific competition. Well, let's probably just say that it's competition within a species. So individuals of the same species are going to occupy the same niche, which means they're competing for basically everything. So, I mean, that could be obviously food, they're going to compete for, I've used nests or mates maybe as a better example. And now we're going to come across another term called carrying capacity. And this is the maximum stable population that an ecosystem can support. So capacity, the amount of how much it can carry, how much it can hold. This is going to vary depending on the biotic and abiotic conditions. So maybe in a good year, um, there's lots of fruit available and you have lots of animals can survive off that fruit in a bad year for fruit then obviously it's the carrying capacity the maximum number will decrease so I'm going to put my carrying capacity as a, a sort of a dotted red line the population is always going to fluctuate a little bit you're always going to have slight booms and slight busts but you know maybe the population is going to fluctuate around the car carrying capacity now, the limiting factor is the thing that's stopping the population growing anymore. So that could be, again, these could be biotic, abiotic. It could be competition for food. There's not enough food to share between the individuals within the same species. And so that's why the population doesn't grow. Maybe it's an abiotic thing. So it could be maybe nesting sites as well. I'm going to put these down here. So carrying capacity is going to vary. I might define a limiting factor. Nice biological technical term there, the thing that limits population size. This could again be biotic, so food, competition for food, or it could be abiotic, could be nesting sites. Okay, so that's intraspecific competition within a species. Let's look at interspecific competition. I'm going to be quite tight on space. So I'm going to actually use this top line. So competition between species is obviously going to affect the abundance and distribution of other things. So we could say the abundance of one species will affect the other.
So we could look, uh, obviously organisms with a similar niche are going to compete for resources. There's a full video on the niche concept, so I suggest you watch that for full details. In fact, I should really say here, species. So the example I use, I think, is a blue tit and a great tit. In They're obviously going to eat similar things. They're going to live in similar places. They're going to have competition, inter-specific competition. OK, so another thing that we can look at is the predator-prey relationships. So this is pretty classic. You'll have done this at GS GCSE another little graph and let's say we've got a rabbit and a fox maybe the rabbit's numbers begin to increase it's going to fluctuate a little bit on the way as a result always behind is going to be the fox numbers coming up and then the rabbit numbers are going to go down because of the increased predation the fox numbers are going to probably continue to rise for a little bit and then they're going to start to fall maybe the rabbits have a really bad year they go right down but they recover quite quickly. The fox population is going to mimic that, and so on and so forth. So these are never going to be truly straight lines. Maybe something like this. The fox is, again, the fox peak is always going to be afterwards, and we're going to see it, it reflected like this. Depending on how complicated the, the predator-prey relationship is, if the fox is eating lots of other things and the rabbit's not a major part of its food source, then this is going to have a much less effect. Okay, I only need a tiny bit of space for distribution, so let's look at some abiotic factors. So the abiotic factors that are going to affect abundance are that individuals can tolerate a certain range of abiotic conditions, a certain temperature, a certain pH. So where conditions are optimal, population size will be the greatest. So population size, you probably should say abundance here. So we could look at water availability in the soil. If there's not enough, then the plant's tomato is going to close because it wants to save water. If there's too much water in the soil, maybe they're anaerobic and they, the roots don't get enough oxygen for respiration. You can also look at the tree line. So maybe, oh, that's, maybe it's a better idea. Altitude. If you look at any big mountains, usually on the bottom of the mountain, you've got loads of trees. As you continue going up the mountain, then the trees fade away. So maybe this is our mountain slope, something like this. And what you'll find is that you'll get trees all the way up to a certain point. But beyond a certain point, there'll be what we call the tree line. And the tree line is where the abiotic conditions usually, the temperature, the altitude, the exposure, the lack of oxygen in the air possibly if they're very high mountains, is going to prevent trees from growing above that and normally that's the abiotic conditions. Whereas maybe down here is, is much more tolerable, the population is obviously going to be higher, more abundance. And then lastly, we're going to look at the distribution of how these things are going to affect the distribution of organisms. Well, these are kind of connected because obviously if you've got very high predation in one place, you're going to have fewer of the prey species and so that's going to affect the distribution. So we could say interspecific competition and predation will affect an organism's distribution. The reason I've done it in red here is a key term. I've done it in green here because it's um, a biotic factor. We can also say that organisms will only exist where they can survive. So, for example, there's, there's no penguins in the Caribbean, there's no trees above the tree line.
So the greatest emphasis here is going to be the interactions. It's all about niches and how things are going to compete with each other and share energy.